Hey, today we're learning about encapsulation. Encapsulation in Java is basically using methods to set variables in a class. I'm gonna show you that in a super simple way to get it working for you in your Java project. Hey, what's up? My name is Alex. I make a Java tutorial on this channel every single week, just like this one for you. So if you might be interested in seeing that, then please consider subscribing. So let's start um, some encapsulation. Let's just do a new Java project. I'll call it like, encapsulation here together, hit finish, and then inside we'll make two classes. The first class we'll make um, is going to be an object for like a student. That's a pretty common example. So I'll just say student and uh, we won't add the main method to this. Okay, next right click on source again, make another class and this one will be the main class. And this will have the main method um, and we're gonna trigger code through here. So the word encapsulation kind of sounds like in capsule, like in a little capsule. So if you think of like a pill, everything is inside the pill. But for encapsulation in Java, all the setting of variables of a class is inside a method. So we'll just go into our student class and this represents a student object or just a student in general. All objects in Java have attributes and things it can do. So let's describe the student here. Say it has a name and let's say they have an age. And we could go on to add methods that say what the student can or cannot do, like um, enroll in a class method or whatever. But the methods we wanna write are for encapsulation, which is setting and retrieving the variables. So name is gonna have two methods called getName and setName. And age is gonna also have the two same methods, but set age and get age. Now we'll get to that in a second, but I wanna show you why this is important. So if we tried to use our student here, we'd have to make a student. So like student s equals new student. And we can print out those variables, s.name and s.age. Right now it's null and zero because they're not set to anything. If we wanted to set the name and age this way, we would have to do s.name equals, say, Tommy, and s.age equals 17. Save and run. But this isn't a good practice in object-oriented programming because what we really wanna do is we just wanna call methods that do this for us instead of having to type out equals this, equals this all the time. So the way we use encapsulation is to get around this and we use getters and setters. So let's make those. Now every method has a few keywords in front. These methods are going to be public for whoever wants to create a student can access these. So we're gonna say public. We're not gonna include the static keyword because static means you don't have to make an object to call a method. But in this case, we are gonna make a student object to call this method. So we're gonna skip the static keyword. We're going to set the name. And in this case, it's not gonna return anything because we're just setting it. So if we don't wanna return anything in the method, we just type void. The name of our method will be set name. And we'll pass in our new name in here. And all this method is gonna do is say name equals new name. And that's it. So let's try to test this out. We'll call set name from the main method and try to set this name. So we have our student. We're going to do s dot to bring up everything the student knows and can do. In this case, it knows the age and name, but since we added set name, it also knows set name. And we'll add, let's do a different name. How about Susie? And then we'll print out what the actual name is. Save and run, and we get Susie. So basically, what we're doing is we're creating a student object, S, and S knows everything inside of here. So when we put an S.setName, Susie, in the parameter, it knows that there's a method called setName with a string parameter and it goes in here, sets name 
equal to the new name, which we passed in as Susie. And then so when we print out s.name, since it's set, we print out Susie. Now this might be kind of like, well, we could set it with the equal sign or we could set it with the method. What, what's the big deal? Why do we really need to do this? Well, the point of encapsulation is to abstract the variables from the user to make it simpler to use the object. So in reality, these would not be shown to the user. We would not be able to do s.name or s.h. So these should actually be private. They should not be shown to the user. So these need the private keyword. Now, if we tried to run this, we get an error because now when we do s dot, the age and name don't show up because they're hidden, they're private. So now what we have to do is we cr have to create a get name method since we no longer have access to these. And again, the whole point of all this is to make it simpler for the user so they don't have to deal with the variables as well. So this is public because the user is going to use this. Um, it is going to return the name because we're getting the name. We're going to bring the name back to whoever is using it. So name is a string. So our return type is string. Get name. Since we're just retrieving the variable, this method is not going to be useful if we have to pass something into it. So we're not going to pass anything in. And we're just going to use a return statement to return that name into the method call. So if we did get name here, oops, excuse me, s dot get name. Since it's public, we can see this method. If we run this, it does the same thing. We do s dot set name and then s dot get name. And this is basically encapsulation, okay? It's that simple. Just making a set method and a get method for the variables because they're private to make it simpler for the user. So now let's do this with age. Let's make a set age method. This is going to be public to the user. Since we're setting, we're not gonna return anything because we don't really need to. So we'll just type void. We're gonna set age. And we'll just name it set age because that makes sense. And we're gonna set the, na set the age equal to whatever the user passes in. So to make it match up, we've got to pass in an integer. We'll call it new age. If this um, parameter name was the exact same as the variable name up here, you'd have to do um, you'd have to use uh, the this keyword to kind of get around it. You have to do this dot name equals name or this dot age equals age. I have a video on that if you want to check that out, but it's it's not necessary if the parameter names are different. So we'll just set age equals new age. Now we'll make the get age method, get age here public because the user is going to use it. We're going to return an integer because we're going to get age. So this has to be int, call it get age. No parameters because we don't need to. And then use a return statement to throw the age back at the user. So this is all the code if you want to see it. And I'll go over this at the very end as well. Um, we'll just do s.setAge to what age? It should be, should be 24. And then we'll print out s.getAge. Let me see, Susie is 24. So again, encapsulation is one of the simplest things in object-oriented programming. It's just that since it's such a big word and teachers don't really know how to explain it to people who don't know what object-oriented programming is or are new, it just seems complicated. But in reality, it's extremely simple. All we're doing is making it simpler for the user of an object, so like the student object, we're allowing them not to have to deal with variables and to just set and get all the variables of an object through these methods. 
And so how do we do that? Well, we make um, like a set name method and pass in a name. Um, and we make a get name method that will return the name. Since these are private, we need to expose those variables to the user somehow via methods. And all of your setters and getters are going to look exactly like this, OK? This variable equals the parameter and return the parameter. So if you ever hear getters and setters, they're 99% of the time going to look exactly like this. So I hope this helped you learn encapsulation. If it did, please leave a like. I tried to do my best to explain this for you because I know encapsulation can be kind of scary. But again, it's super simple. So thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.